welcome everybody. Good evening. Good to have you with us on this edition of the Urban Debate. Uh, I'm Tanvi Shukla and tonight we are actually going to focus on what we think needs to be explained to you about the government's new guidelines. Uh, the government today came out with a new set of rules uh, where there have been some relaxations, especially some amount of relief that's come in for the rural sector even a little bit to the, for the industry sector and some of it will actually impact you the viewer directly so the idea is for the over the next 50 minutes to try and understand and answer as many questions of yours as we can in fact uh, just to give you a sense of what it is that we will be addressing questions like and these are the questions our viewers have actually sent us through the day questions like can i order a mobile phone or an electronic goods online now because the e-commerce activity has now been allowed in a full fledged way. Will we have access to essentials till April 20th or does it become a, become a problem till then and only gets resolved after that? What about small scale industries and garments? Will they be allowed to run? What transport services will remain suspended and what will actually run? Uh, there is a lot of conversation, of course, apart from you know what has been announced today on can companies refute, refuse to pay salaries during the lockdown period uh, will BPOs be allowed to function? Uh, will the government announce an economic package? Can we travel from one state to the other? Will delivery of goods purchased online take more time than what we are seeing right now or what we saw pre-lockdown period? How will the government ensure that there is social distancing in the manufacturing sector now that some rules have been relaxed? Can I commence construction work at my home or in my office? What about private cab aggregators? So there's a series of questions that people have sent to us. All of this in the light of the fact, of course, viewers, uh, that today the government said that barring the containment zones and the hot spots, there will be some relaxation in other areas. So industrial zones can begin to function. Uh, special economic zones can begin to function. In the rural part of our country, Manrega related activities will start. Construction of roads and highways and other, uh, 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 other projects can actually also start. Even in uh, cities and other districts, if it's not in a containment zone, if you don't have to bring in your labor, then you can carry on with your construction activity. There is some addition to the kind of services that can uh, run. So let's straight away, without wasting any time, go across to our panelists and let me introduce to you what we ha who we have this evening. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being with us. Mr. Vaiteswaran, he is the e-commerce founder and expert on all things startup and e-commerce who joins us right now. Mr. Dilip Chinoy, he's the general secretary for Fiki. Uh, Chirag Katira, he's with the All India Motor Transport. He is also the project head for COVID-19 uh, in that sector. And Mr. K. E. Raghunathan, former national president of All India Manufacturers Organization, also joins us this evening. Thank you so much. Um, let's begin with you, uh, Mr. Raghunathan. Give us a sense of, you know, how can life change for people in the, uh, 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 you know, in the sector itself, what do these guidelines do? Thank you, Tanvi, and uh, nice to be back on your channel. But let me tell you, uh, I, I would like to largely address myself for self-employed and MSME sector in this country, okay? Now, there is a debate, life or livelihood. The first 21 days, we were all very clear that it was life first. Mm. And now we have entered into a phase that we also realize livelihood becomes important. And uh, the government has formed a relaxation policy, in my opinion, not based on what you need, based on what they should allow. I think the frame of the picture is first fixed and then try to fit whoever can make advantage to be in this frame, let them make use of it. Now, the frame is very clear. The frame is says that I cannot allow this disease to expand. So I am only relaxing on the areas where it has not yet reacted on the business enterprises which may not be able to be uh, stopped because of this relaxation. If you look at it from that perspective, then your mindset will be very clear. Now let's go into the announcement. I have my own feeling. Yesterday our Honorable Prime Minister addressed the nation. The way he talked, uh, obviously I was uh, taken aback that we are in for little more serious issues in connection with the COVID. Uh, he, he drew the Lakshman Rekha again and he said, all be inside. 
and he said i will relax you a little from 20th but till 3rd of may nobody should move that easily that was his dictum now today the announcement has come from 20th onwards there will be a relaxation mostly if you really look at the relaxation it is meant for rural based industries functioning if you take uh, uh, let's say my own factory which is in the amputur industrial estate which is at the main city of chennai i have uh, about 75 components and the 75 components i will have about 30 from the local industry about another 30 from within tamil nadu about 25 coming from all over india and about 3 to 4 coming from abroad i can't start my manufacturing unless i have all the raw materials in right so some people can function some people cannot function whoever can function be happy whoever cannot function keep praying no i am sure i am sure uh, there will be voices who will feel they are let down there will be voices who feel they are gratified and some more clarification in the announcements are still needed uh, let's say for example the government allows plumbers electricians and carpenters can be engaged but then where will they buy the materials from hmm. suppose if somebody comes to my house and he finds the tap has to be changed there is no shop open for him to go and buy it. so how will he do that there is a question mark somebody who is uh, constructing a house in a or i have a factory in ambattur which is probably not contained uh, which is not in the uh, zone which has got the disease but then some of my key workers are coming from the area which is contained how will they travel small scale industries how will they be able to transport people and uh, how will they be ensure that everything is safe inside the factory these are all question marks these are all matter of concern how will i apply for a pass how will i get the pass big companies large scale industries may not have a problem but i do see some problems for them also okay. let's take industry let's say industries which are in the municipal out of municipal areas what will they be the issue let's say i manufacture cement right but i manufacture cement i have no problem i would have produced the cement but then where do i sell it or how do i sell it Correct. how do i distribute it okay so otherwise what will happen in the next 10 days i will have stock of various finished product or i would have converted raw material or semi finished product into a finished product right so i need to lease out on the selling points i need to make sure the shops are open to sell the people are able to buy the normal c returns only when the chain is complete okay now so at this point, moment mr ragana uh, if i can just come in here um uh, fair point let me pick up that point and take it to our other panelists and also i think there's a bit of a rustle with your mic you may want to just readjust where the headphone mic is falling uh, so th there's a bit of a rustle that's coming in but mr chinoy would you want to uh, come in and weigh in on this let's just talk about the fact that there is significant amount of uh, you know relief that has been uh, given in uh, uh, as far as the manufacturing sector is concerned not in crowded cities or hotspot zones how do we interpret this what does it mean for the economy and for the business function so i think taking on from where uh, raghunathan actually ended and uh, you know shared his before lockdown that is you know before opening up before 20th only essential commodities were allowed to be manufactured and you know even distributed even there we were having challenges because couriers were not allowed uh, people's movement was not allowed this order today has actually come and done two things one it is clarified to a much larger extent what can be done and what cannot be done and also very clearly said where it can be done now you know if for example there are construction sites where the workers live on the site and there is enough cement and there is enough you know uh, material uh, to work in the previous order they were not allowed to work now they are allowed to work so whether it's in mumbai or whether it's a flyover built somewhere or something done in the sagarmala uh, project so that activity can start hmm. second is that you know a lot of the shops people were restricting timings people were doing all sorts of things around the country now it said shops can be open shops can sell so there are three parts to the whole chain one is production second is transportation and we have chirag here who can speak very nicely about transportation and the third is actually distribution and selling 
right? So the e-commerce, I'm sure uh, Vaithi Shivan will speak about it. But there are companies who have stock but cannot sell because their shops are not open. Yeah. Now the shops are being allowed to open so that at least consumers can go and, you know, maintaining social distancing and, and, and do that and try and buy in local shops in local areas. Second, the street vendors who are possibly for a lot of urban consumers, their first place to go and buy vegetables or buy fruits, uh, etc. Those are being allowed to actually functioning. So you don't have to travel to a market, you know, a local street vendor can actually supply, you know, can open and can supply you. The third is, it is the onset of summer. So a lot of things are required to get the you know, water purifiers going, the water pumps, the electric, you know, the electric, the ACs, all that also is actually being done to allow people in both urban areas and other areas to prepare for the heat and you know, make life simpler uh, for us uh, going forward. In rural areas, where you know the agriculture mangoes are being harvested or chicos have been harvested or pineapples have been done we needed the food processing uh, companies to come come on board so we have allowed the food processing companies to come on board and while you were actually introducing the subject you talked about you know industrial estates secs and you know, all the other areas the contained areas so the idea and the thought behind this what ragu actually said in the beginning was how can we allow economic activity or where can we allow economic activity with the minimum amount of uh, people moving or people can uh, who, who can carry the possible thing and infect others yeah. at the same time allow the economy to start functioning so the daily needs and the essential requirements are actually manufactured produced distributed and sold so that is the whole thing behind this uh, order uh, which has been done. So I have two questions, follow up questions to what you've said, Mr. Chennai. When you say the shops will be open, do you mean beyond the essentials, some shops will be open? Or this is no, like we're only no. talking about groceries and so, rationing. So, yes. so what has been what has been allowed? You see, when prior to the order, yeah. uh, many states were actually uh, uh, allowing only certain shops to open, open for certain amount of hours. Right. Right. Even the retail stores or the, the you know the let's say the, you know, the, the, the large format retailers or something were restricted, et cetera, et cetera. So they've right. actually put down uh, the framework that they can open. In fact, some, some space you will see will allow longer, longer working hours to access, uh, to enable the shops to get more people while maintaining social distances. Uh, you know, I don't, I, you know, if anybody has actually gone out to a shop you know, to buy something, you'll find that most people have put barricades in front, yes. there have been markers outside, so to stand at distance. And if, you know, if the shops are open only for limited time, it's very difficult to maintain social distancing and buy what you actually want. And the second thing is that they've allowed a few more things in the essential uh, categories, uh, in essential items, right, which are required for working from home, you know, IT devices, yeah. right, you know, other things that they have done. So it has been done, and this is from April 20th to May 3rd, so there's 13 days. And depending, you know, I, I'm very sure that supposing we find that in some areas the numbers are going down and is being contained, uh, there is no bar on adding new things, you know, after the 20th or after the 25th, eh, before the 3rd of May. So it's a continuously evolving process. And I think the teams, the civil service, both at the center and the state, are doing a huge actual amount of work. It's very unnoticed work. You notice the healthcare workers. Mm -hmm. But the local district magistrate to the local guy at the ground who's helping this to happen. It's a great, great thing happening. And the whole idea is to how make life simpler for you and me as consumers and okay. also enable the whole thing to work. Yes, no, of course. And, and the, uh, from the government's point of view, gradually, uh, you know, I think it's unprecedented and, uh, you know, uh, times for everybody. Everybody is going through this for the first time. So we are only... Uh, discovering what the hurdles are and slowly trying to fix everything. Before I go to our other two panelists, very quickly, Mr. Raghunathan, do you want to add to that point about shops? And also because there are specific queries that our viewers are sending, asking, can I do construction work or finish construction work at my house? Is that possible? Do we have uh, any clarity on that yet? See, I have a feeling that, uh, uh, is my audio clear now? Better? There is a bit of rustle, but go ahead. We can hear you. Yes. Okay, uh, I still believe that uh, the learning in the 21 days of the first lockout period is everything should not come only from the central government. Central government should give only a broad guidelines 
and the state government depending on each state's requirements and the needs must be able to allow to form a policy of which should be open which should not be open what time to open what time not to open and then the district administration must be empowered only with the executional aspect of it hmm. today there is a chaos that there is some districts which has different timings different activities different states have different activities central between the ministries have different uh, priorities and things like that broad guidelines alone must be given second in my opinion we must also now look at how do we keep the people who are at home engaged if you take my own house my wife who is not a working woman she is continues to be busy even in the 21 days or in fact more busy here if you take my children who are working in the organization they are easily adaptable to work from home if you take an entrepreneur like me who is confined i see it like a jail for me now beyond a little bit of watching a tv i become difficult liability in my house to be kept on so i look for an opportunity to walk on the street or go outside to see what's happening try and see how far i can go and all this antique site right yeah. now how do you keep me busy you can keep me busy by giving me some repair work which i have not done in my house some construction work which i have not done in my house so one way it's very happy for me they have released plumbers carpenters and electricians to come i will at least become busier but they should allow to open the shops of that second yes. my wife mixy went out of order suddenly yes. and i don't have any place to repair and i don't want to be confined to the kitchen cutting vegetables and mixing correct so i would rather love to have those kind of small service centers being opened so okay. that i am able to attend to those work if you allow me to do that i would have got decentralized with my responsibility the social distancing would have automatically come in place that's my say you on this Please. on your on your specific question on construction yes. right so you said if i want to construct in my house will i be allowed to do that now there are three elements in that the first is that if you know you might have all the workers at uh, actually staying on the place where it is being built if it's a new house etc that's one situation the other is if you have workers coming out or traveling in the work there, there is no public transportation so how can yeah. those people actually reach the workplace even if you provide for car there is some social distancing you know there but for those who are in suppose in the you know i'm staying in a in a in a in a in a in a, in a, in a residential area yeah. and i have workers staying at home the rwa may not allow it the rwa may be worried about it so the rwa is actually need to understand what is the extent uh, if the persons are there for 14 days already quarantined they're not going out then if there's enough cement and enough thing they should allow it right? mm. because it you know so it there are a lot of different as ragu said there's a district administration in play there's a local administration in play there's a yeah, center yeah. in play so yeah. a lot of thing happens and this is a time for us to actually collaborate and 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 you know do joint thinking and always just work with the simple thing that the first priority is to prevent the spread of more infection okay i take your point now let me go across to mr vaitheeswaran and uh, vaitheeswaran and ask him this question if mr ragunathan's mixi is not working mr vaitheeswaran can he order one online now and uh, buy it from one of the e-commerce big giants will that get delivered depends upon my place of stay <laughs> yeah okay so um, tanvi first thank you for having me here uh, it's a pleasure being on the show thank you um so yes you know i think there are two problems right now most sites are not taking orders for anything apart from essential goods and you know if you go to an amazon like site the big messenger the home page is we still now beginning to supply essential goods we're slowly opening up but the reality is when you go inside a you don't find the products almost all products have been out of stock so the short answer is can mr ragunathan Uh, order his mixi i think the better option for him is to keep looking for the service center for a while i don't think <laughs> to order anything and get it delivered okay. service center is not open yes. yeah, so that's, that's that's what i'm saying i think yes. you can keep yourself busy looking for the service center now oh. the bigger problem for e-commerce companies is not allowing the stock see the good thing about e-commerce from a technology point of view is that it just takes a few minutes for amazon to make 20 million products available in stock all they have to go is the back end and say stock available and it comes up now assuming you take orders which is also not not a problem because once the items comes in stock a customer can go online log on to the site using the web or the app pay online everything is done i think the big problem is how will they deliver 
Now, it's not merely a problem of transportation itself, which we've already discussed. Mm. Uh, the new rules that have come in today clearly say e-commerce companies are allowed to move their products, uh, move their services, transport goods, all that is allowed. Mm. I think the big problem is there are no delivery people. I don't think that problem is going to change soon enough. The reality is a lot of these people who work in local warehouses, who work for these large giants, and there are thousands and thousands of them don't stay very close walking distances to these warehouses. They stay in different parts of the city. Correct. They need local transport to reach. A lot of them are not necessarily locals. They have moved from different states and different cities to work in places like Bangalore and Chennai, which are large hubs for delivery, moved in from um, rural areas, moved in from the, what you call the migrant labor. They've come from other parts. Migrant labor is not necessarily people who work in the unorganized sector. They also work in places like like as delivery teams for e-commerce companies, many of them can't reach. Many of them have gone back to their place of work. So yeah. I don't think the problem is going to get solved anytime soon just because Amazon or anybody else is allowing or accepting orders. I think they have to solve the physical problem of getting labor to make deliveries. To me, that problem is not going to get solved even by May 30th, forget April 20th. I think that's going to take longer simply because People need to have trust. People who must be able to have the trust to be go back and say, I can A, work. If I finish my work, I will be able to come back because there's transport available. If I want to take a break for lunch, there's a place for me to go eat food. And what about social distancing? The fact is, if you have a warehouse which has 10,000 people working, about a grocery website and they have 10,000 people working, where's the social distancing norm? The fact is all of these websites were built to put in 20,000, 30,000 SKUs, massive amount of stock, small um, small areas, very little moving uh, space available, free space available, and lots of people. They are not using robots or anything, They're using actual people to pick, pack, and ship. I mean, if you put them all back and start taking orders for all essential goods, your social distancing norm will go out of the window. So I think there's a bigger problem here. So while on paper, it does seem uh, that it's possible for us to order other things, Mr. Vaitiswaran, what you are saying is because of social distancing and availability of manpower, it's not going to be possible. Yes, so that's what I'm saying. I think there are two parts here. Can I order? I think we will be able to order. Obviously, the websites will not take orders because they can't deliver. But technically, there is nothing to stop us from placing an order. I think the real problem is, can the websites deliver? My feeling is, for a while, I don't think they'll be able to deliver. You have yeah. to understand that in the 21-day lockdown, yeah. they have all, especially you know, sites like uh, Amazon and Big Basket, who actually focused on delivering groceries, have, have been grappling with the lack of manpower to deliver essential supplies. Correct. Correct. I have a feeling over the next two weeks, they'll try and solve that problem. They're not going to solve the problem how to deliver non-essentials. So even if we want to order, I think the websites are facing a lag. They're still trying to solve last lockdown, lockdown one's problem, where I get the manpower to deliver essentials and mm. then move to non essential So I think we're in a lag here. I don't think the manpower, labor, delivery, pick, pack, ship problem is going to solve anytime soon, especially okay. non essentials. Okay, that, that, uh, that's interesting. And I think that's helpful as well, uh, quite a bit. Chirak, Katira, thank you so much for patiently waiting. Uh, you represent a sector which is most crucial in this supply chain. Uh, explain to us how, how, uh, how does it benefit the transport sector? Hi, Tanvi, thank you for having me. So I'm representing All India Motor Transport. And uh, currently uh, we are representing one crore truckers and 55 lakh uh, bus owners. So as the government has given a lot of uh, this thing, uh, they are allowing uh, uh, the vehicle movement for essential and non-essential goods. But uh, uh, hardly, if you see after this 21 days lockdown, hardly 20, uh, oh, sorry, if you see in this uh, lockdown, the hardly 6 to 7 percent vehicles are moving. That is 6 to 7 lakh vehicles have moved for the essential goods. And now the challenge is in this uh, 21 days, a lot of truck drivers mm. have already moved on to their villages. Yeah. And secondly, and uh, this truck drivers were from uh, different different states. They moved there, and uh, a lot of uh, drivers had left their truck with a loaded truck and moved on to the states. Hmm. So the, the biggest challenge for us is to identify find out the truck and how to make the driver reach that truck. Because as uh, as Mr. Shina also said, uh, this thing the the transport the public transport is not available for them to reach. So this is the biggest challenge for us. Okay, we are not able to uh, like you know send the drivers move the loaded 
material back and uh, we also don't know okay the material which is loaded in the truck will it be safe or it's not safe the, the biggest challenge for us is that and after the government has given this uh, free movement you can say now the ashin support agency can be moved but we don't have labels with us hmm. labels uh, lo- the loaders and unloaders so if you i will give an example like you know bivandi is a very big hub of uh, like right now for the the things to come into mumbai or in the different places in the maharashtra correct but uh, all the warehouses in bivandi are closed hardly you can say 2% are functioning it's so because the reason they are closed is they don't have labor so the biggest challenge it was as we also saw in the news yesterday i think a lot of people gathered at wanted a, to go home yes yeah wanted to go home so right now so these people don't want to come uh, on the work they don't want to be on the truck they don't want to go for the loading and loading they just want to go back to the village so once this problem is uh, rectified the uh, government builds a trust to this way this uh, labors uh, they need trust like you know so once the government builds that trust with them okay don't worry we are there with you and you don't need to go back to your village you load into my crate then only this problem can be resolved and uh, things will be placed because transport is a, just a part of a wheel the whole economy uh, manufacturer retailer these are the main player we just transport the goods but as a uh, again mr shinoy said okay, the retail market is not working so as i told you out of 1 crore trucks only 5 to 6 lakh are working so what about the even if even other drivers are coming on the trucks what would be deliver as retail is not working warehouses are shut yeah. so what is the point of calling the drivers back on the truck as we already have a salary burden and again these people on the trucks talking there is a one more burden on us labor ka burden yes yeah, yeah. so So, so le- tell me this, uh, Chirag. W- what is the status currently? Are there still a lot of trucks lying abandoned? You know, uh, yes, uh, yes, on highways yes. where the drivers have, in some or the other way, tried to get home or just find shelter elsewhere. There are more than twenty uh, lakh trucks which are abandoned on the in the country, all over the country, and which are still like you know standing at uh, like different different places. Okay. Okay, so that problem continues. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yes. So, so continue. because initially the, the the thought process was that okay, uh, with the new set of guidelines that have come in, you will be able to you know at least open some dhabas and food places and shelter places along the highways, even puncher shops for you know trucks which are traveling on the highways. They need some kind of servicing as well. All of that uh, will be allowed, so that will make life easier. But you're saying the drivers aren't there, so none of this will help to help a great us, extent. Yeah. definitely and again for the puncher shop again that the the the, the person who is uh, fixing the puncher he again he has to reach to the shop yeah so as the public transport is not able how these people will reach to the shop that's yeah. the main challenge like public transport is zero and not everyone owns a car or owns a bike and not everyone has access to e pass as government even if i want to travel from one place to another i need to go to the nearest police station take a pass and to verify myself and then only they are allowing me to travel so not everyone has access to that e pass they can't go and apply for the e pass or they can't go to the nearest police station and because there is no proof they don't have, they don't know the numbers of the vehicle standing at the puncher shop so government or the police station won't won't allow just like that's why correct correct mr raghunath you wanted to make a point yeah i would like to come uh, come back to you on few thought process okay hmm. i am uh, when the 21 days of curfew was announced at 8 o'clock starting from 12 o'clock most of the entrepreneur like me we had actually abandoned the factory in the sense we came back home listened to the speech and after that we have never gone to our factory in the last 22 days hmm. so we don't know the condition of the machines condition of the raw materials and nothing hmm. i think the government is the prime objective for them to announce this relaxation from 20th to 3rd is for us to get prepared with the hope that everything becomes controlled from 3rd of may so that we can go to the factory check on the machines prepare ourselves prepare on the raw material so that we are ready to go when it starts i think that was a more of an objective behind this scenario and i would urge all the msme entrepreneurs who are seeing this program to make use of this time 13 days don't think about how your invoicing problem but think about your operational issue get yourself ready gear up yourself good days are coming and after this episode you are going to be full working for 24 more 7 and get ready to handle that and come out of all your problems okay. that's what i wanted to share okay mr katida wants to add yeah. before i go back to dilip chana yes mr katida yeah so sir as we are seeing right now all the like my drivers other drivers whom i am in contact with they all want to go back to the village very desperately 
So I think once the lockdown is uh, like over, I think they all will run away to the villages. Even the labors want to go back. So yeah. I don't think the function, the functionality won't be like so smooth and easy. Uh, after the lockdown, we're gonna suffer more because all these people once they go to their village, they won't be coming back before like three four months. Yeah. So even though I am going to the office, but uh, who will drive my trucks? Who will do loading and unlo- unloading for me? So this is the biggest challenge right now. Also, I think even after the lockdown, this thing will be like for us. The indirect lockdown will be st- the effect of the lockdown will be on us for more three four months, and uh, it will take for time to like you know the economy to heal and things to fall in the places and smooth down. Mr. Dilip Chana, do you want to come in on that? Because you know this has been a concern that's been raised earlier as well. The fact that uh, thousands of the uh, workers, daily wage workers, the migrants have already headed back home. and there's a lot of fear factor it will be a challenge to get them back they don't know when they come back will they have a job not have a job will they have to start from scratch and like chirag is pointing out perhaps if we do have a uh, you know lockdown a lifting many of them would simply want to rush home to begin with so i think you know the, the problem has to be broken up into different parts right so first is that the time of the lockdown actually coincides with the time of the harvest Yes. So in any case, many of these labor who used to work in different metros used to actually go back to their villages to help in the harvest process because that is where you know the construction worker who worked in the metro or the other worker who worked here actually his family job you know was to really help in the harvest and you know actually go back and even some of the truck drivers and all actually own pieces of land and you know they wanted to go back. The second challenge there is that. they are not too sure about the state of their families back home because Correct. they used to actually send money home every month and now that because you know the informal sector is broken down and you know while they are getting some support they are unable to send money back home right uh, you know you can maybe use paytm and all but going to the post office and giving a money order which a lot of people do or still and all that all is not allowed so they are very worried about people at home so if they can actually have this communication and take you know people at home and things like that but the third is the really critical one you know they believe that this is a, a infection that actually started from the cities and yeah. you know because they are in the city they are going to get it so now we actually if you start allaying that fear and then therefore these containment zones are really contained and this buffer zone is maintained and we say that you know outside the the buffer zone and containment zone it is there and they see no fresh actually cases happening then that sentiment will improve then people will be more willing to come so we have to actually work on that yeah. and the yeah. other thing which i actually wanted to uh, you know say that ragu ratan and chirag have a great area to collaborate chirag has got 37 35000 buses which are lying there yes, and, and, and 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 ragu needs to transport workers with safe Thing. So if you can collaborate and then you know take those buses, put fuel. Not on truck. Not on truck. No, I, 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 not on truck on buses. I think buses. Not, no. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying that you know you have to think about a new way of doing business post the lifting of the lockdown, yeah. and we have to collaborate and cooperate. Otherwise, this is not going to be you know not going to be solved. Okay, Mr. Vaithi Swaran wants to come in. Go ahead, please. Yeah. You know. Um, i just want to take off on the point that uh, mr dilip chenai was saying um, we have to be prepared for a significant change in our workplaces post the lockdown i mean it's not just the offices alone but even our manufacturing plants our manufacturing plants essentially have been built in remote areas yeah. across the country they are all separate zones yeah. uh, the working space the people for manpower is limited and obviously so and i think as these norms become the new normal the distancing norms and every day what was 1 meter became 2 meters 3 meters and now suddenly people are saying it's coming in the air 6 meters 8 meters there's going to be a massive amount of concern about how am i going to manage these workplaces so one is to get the labor back in correct Second is to win their trust which is what mr chennai was talking about which i think is very critical and i don't think it's going to happen overnight third is after you get them back into the workplaces are our existing workplaces whether it's a manufacturing plant or whether it's a service industry are they equipped to handle the new normal i mean with the social distancing norm people get what 20 30 40 50 feet cubicles to work with how are you going to work so yeah. that's going to be a massive issue and you know all of that will impact productivity it's not just getting the raw material finally you have to get people working at full pace 
with no concern on anything except the job to deliver productivity. That I think is going to be a challenge for a while. It's not going to be easy to come I, out. I, I just had one more question with you before I go across to Mr. Raghunathan. Um, you know, uh, people are also asking, how will we ensure social distancing even in the go-downs, even in the manufacturing facilities and units? Now, initially, the government had said that, you know, only 50% labor would be allowed, not that we could find more than that any which is in this scenario. Great. But uh, is, is that, uh, you know, still a challenge that while... Uh, uh, relaxation has come in. It will be difficult for individual uh, companies to follow these norms. I think so too. So, you know, you're right. While the government has now saying you can work with 50% labor, I have a feeling the 50% uh, quota is not going to be easy to fill because a lot of it are people who are not going to come back. I think 10, 15, I, I was talking to a couple of e-commerce companies and they said they're currently their warehouses are operating at 10, 15% of the required manpower. So 50% hmm. is a far away, but I think the real problem is even assuming, even assuming that you get 50%, forget hundred percent, 50% of the people in none of these places are meant for this kind of social distancing norm. Absolutely. I mean, the reality is all of us in this world, not just in India, but all over the world have learned this new word for social distancing. Yeah. Right? What, what we are learning every day is what is the distance? The distance has started from one meter to three to five, you know, six eight, meters, yes. eight meters, people are saying, I mean, just difficult, right? So all those workplaces have to be crafted. Now, if you take those warehouses and start increasing social distancing norms, the fact is none of these people will be able to reach the goods. So how will they pack? How will they deliver? I think we're going to re recraft and re-engineer most businesses over the next six months before some amount of normalcy starts creeping in from a productivity norm. Okay. One of the other queries, Mr. Dilip Chennai, maybe you can shed light on this. People are also asking, will manufacturing units uh, within city limits be allowed to function? So, so, you know, if you come in that classification of that SEZ or that, in, you know, that zones that they have talked about, yeah. and many of them are in, in, the, in the city limits of, let's say, Chennai or Delhi or things like that. Correct. So they're very, very clear. They've allowed them to function. But okay. if that area is a hot zone or is a containment zone or a buffer zone, then it is like business before uh, 20th April. Yeah. Okay. I, Tanvi, Tanvi, yes. Tanvi, can I come in? Yes, Mr. Raghunath. Tanvi, post-COVID, I would say all MSMEs will get modified. When I say modified, M for modernization, O for optimization, D for digitalization, I for internationalization. Mm. If you don't become modified, you are gone. Mm. That's what will happen post-COVID. These 13 days, MSMEs should re-engineer themselves. They can't make the product the way they have made in the past. They love to innovate. They love to modernize themselves. Hmm. I think more funds will have to be allocated from the government to make them reinvent themselves. Thanks to people uh, passing orders against the Chinese outfits, like Japan giving $2 billion for companies to move out of Japan. US 200 companies move out of Japan. India, this is the right time for us to bring Make India scheme in place with the only one condition, any small-scale industry wanting to come into India must tie up with an existing small-scale industry. If they do this together, they would have upgraded our unit. They would have also come into India and government must put in money for downward integration. No more dependence on imports from China. We will become self-dependent. God has given us this opportunity via yes. COVID to yes. reinvent and show us the power. Yes, um, Mr. Raghunathan, I really like how you're being extremely optimistic about the scenario and the situation we are in. Uh, yes, there have been conversations of how India should make use of this opportunity, uh, you know, to ma make its mark in the global trade. Uh, but uh, you, everywhere you see, uh, people are more concerned about saving their job right now and, and, and wondering if their business will actually survive this year, if they will manage to survive with, with, uh, with a job. Uh, because like you also pointed out, 
the COVID scenario has given options to companies uh, where half of their uh, you know, staff is also working from home. And the staff that's working from home is concerned about whether their company is going to call them back to office once the, you know, the lockdown lifts. So uh, yes, wh what you're saying in long term hopefully will work. Uh, a lot of uh, questions that we, I am still getting are about you know, people saying, how does this impact the business and the employment scenario? Uh, uh, so that, I think, uh, remains the challenge in the immediate time. Uh, Mr. Vaitiswaran, you wanted to make a point. Uh, go ahead, please. Yeah, so one of the things I was uh, saying, you know, we make we manufacture beverages now. So yes. These beverages are manufactured in Kanchipuram in Tamil Nadu. We sell them in Bangalore. So even assuming the plant is working, even assuming we get people, you now moving, and we've also discussed that there's a truck problem. But there's also an interstate problem. You know, merely one is to say that the products will be available interstate. I'm not sure how easily will it be for products to actually start interstate. So it'll be easy to do a hub and spoke supply. We make in the factory, we supply around. But yeah. if you're moving goods on highways across interstate, there may be fresh challenges. Yeah. But I'll tell you the good thing, and I agree with what um, Mr. Raghunandan was saying. I think the good thing that has kept us going, our resilience will come through we'll find ways of dealing with it. I, I'm equally bullish about the fact that we'll find ways of dealing with it. I think it has taken all of us by surprise, but we've had 21 days to think about it. What are the 19? I think by the time we come back, we will find ways of dealing with it. But I'm telling you, this is not going to be as easy as it sounds, but we will find ways around it. There's going to be a lot of jugad, but India will find a way around it, unquestionably. Okay, let's, have, yes, let's I think, I think that, the, you know, the issue here is that the districts and states are boundaries, administrative boundaries, but distribution and businesses don't necessarily, especially after GST, they don't have that, you know, uh, administrative and you know, boundaries. And I think people across districts will learn how to actually cooperate. And, you know, earlier there was a ban because you didn't want your district to be infected. Now, if you know that the other district is not infected, and they are, they are practicing certain norms and the district collectors or the key people talk to each other, they will surely allow this movement. We've had cases in the past where, you know, from yeah. uh, Hyderabad, someone needed to go to Karnataka for medical equipment. They actually did it. So people are getting more responsive. And as you know, it was said earlier that this is a very unique situation. It's never happened before. And we just don't have the, you know, best practices and standard operating practices to deal with this across district, across states, across industries, within the same thing across different industries. And that's what this order today was actually trying to do, trying to build a kind of a process. And it's, it's work in progress. It is not full and final, you know. Correct. So let, let me ask you this one more question. Let's just make it slightly more forward looking and a little bit more constructive as well. Mr. So Dilip Chanoy, how do we solve the manpower problem, which is still at the heart of this, you know, one one aspect, of course, is that unless and until there is relief in the entire supply chain, it doesn't help. You be you can be manufacturing, but if you're not able to get to your sellers, it doesn't help. The second is that you need people at every single point. Now, those people have gone missing or don't want to come to work or cannot come to work because of lack of public transport. How do we resolve this problem? So let me actually say that you know, first, a fundamental, that, you know, this is a demand side and supply side issue, right? And if you take labor, earlier there were a lot of people willing to work and very few jobs. Hmm. Now it's the converse. Hmm. There are many jobs going and yeah. people are not there to actually fill it. Right? Yeah. So whatever price you want to pay. This is where the firms and the HR guys and people need to collaborate to actually go. So if you can get a person to go to the village, how good and how well did you know your employee or the labor who was working there or your driver or whatever it is there? It calls for a completely different approach. It also means we need to work with NGOs and social workers to actually start communicating at the grassroots level. And companies will have to do this. That look, you know, fine. Initially, COVID came in. You know, was there in Mumbai and all. You know, you got this. There's no danger in your getting this thing. You have to actually go back. And then I think the government also also start the messaging because at one level the messaging is that okay, you know. We said that you will get your salary for uh, March, right? They're yeah. saying that you've got to consider paying them salary for April. We need to get back the message, you know, chalo kaam karo, you know, yeah. something like that. We need a message uh, like that to go back and everybody working in kind of partnership. This is a, going to be a difficult time, uh, but, you know, again, 
till public transportation is closed till 3rd of may we have to find solutions you know i was not, it, it not only flippant that i said you know raghu and chirag have to collaborate but that's yeah. the only solution because yeah, pillion yeah. riders are not allowed so yes. you know chirag was mentioning that he can't you know take his motorcycle but if the driver has to sit behind the motorcycle he won't be allowed that's not uh, permitted behind in the, in the current regulations no and in india is is yeah, i think the leader when it comes to jugad and innovation in tough times i mean look at all of us uh in any other scenario we would have sent you know camera units to all your places set it up properly with live units i would be in a studio but here we are in our own homes and we are still managing uh to pull off this conversation so people can understand so i think at every level you some kind of collaboration is needed uh so that work can continue chirag i wanted to ask you as well on this how do you resolve the problem of lack of manpower drivers uh, you know especially in your case yeah. go ahead so somewhere i think uh, wherever uh, honorable prime minister he plays a very big role for inspiration so i think if he recognizes the yes. labor like you know the labor if he as mr shanoy said ke if he passes the message ke aao kaam pe lag jao if he gives the like, recognition to the truck drivers ke aap hi ho desh ke sipahi ho hmm. like you know sadak ke sipahi aap log ho and something like that it's that's a motivation for me and they are why they are not coming is because of trust they don't have trust right now on the government on the their own bosses but once is trusted will definitely they'll come back so why not our uh, honorable prime minister comes with this message ke sadak ke sipahi aap log ki zarurat hai aap fir se aa jaiye desh ko aap hi chalaoge you are the backbone some messages like this to motivate them i can guarantee you they'll come back hmm. okay that's it uh, oh uh, let's yeah. hope that happens prime minister in fact he has used his reach and his following and you know his support base uh, to really unite this country and every single time he's come out and spoken people have believed uh, in usha shown their belief in him and have followed whatever he is asked for so maybe it is time uh, that we can uh, ask him actually to come and uh, make this request and reach out and i think not just him individually the state governments the local authorities uh you know le- local leaders ministers they have to do like yesterday we saw chief minister udhav thakre uh, make a comment about uh, to the migrant worker saying please don't leave uh, this is also your home state i will take care of you i will give you food and i will give you shelter uh, maybe it ha- came a little too late but yes that's what's required individually the states have to reach out to to, to these workers and say don't worry don't go home we will ensure that you are all taken care of until this is over i also at this uh, moment want to thank all of you for joining us thank you so much for taking the time out just just to also quickly go through some of the other questions and uh, you know for our viewers many asked us if they will be able to do interstate travel no we will not be able to do interstate travel for uh, for the residents until there is an emergency nothing really changes it's only for essential services at that part changed uh, changes uh then they also asked a question will the lockdown be extended till beyond may 3rd well nobody knows it really depends on how well we fight it for the next couple of weeks and then the government will decide on what has to be done next will automobile shops garages remain open again it comes down to the problem that we were just pointing out difficult to get the people how will they get to the shops even the essential shops which are open right now like in maharashtra they are allowed to be open 24/7 in cities like mumbai but they are not open 24/7 because they don't have people to run operations 24/7 uh, so those are the kind of problems that exist uh, but thank you so much for uh, to all of our panelists for joining us and decoding the government guidelines for lockdown 2.0 i really appreciate it thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you.